Twombly said, if I could do it all over again, I'd make the paintings and keep them all for myself. I'm really curious to learn more about is the, um, the process behind the new work as far as the integration of the computer software, how that's all working. Well, it's, you know, I like collaborating with people who are good collaborators. And you know that just from the chemistry, you feel it. And I met this guy, Shiloh, who is a computer, really good on the computer, and I'm not. And my assistant, Ruby, introduced me. She had this idea. She had this instinct. And so he came over, and he took um, digital files on the work. But more importantly, he did 3D scans. He did a 3D scan of this puppet my grandmother made, which is in my, you know, in my apartment. And then he took um, digital files of some of the paintings I've been working on at that point, and he put them through various programs. He could explain it better, but basically 3D um, video editing programs made by Adobe. And, um, and then he came back with a video which showed one of my paintings transforming um, for, I think, 30 to 45 seconds. And from that, we pulled stills, or he chose stills that then, you know, I edited further. Uh, and then I repainted them. So those are here. And these are, have just been in my studio. You know, all of these. Some, you can see, you know, resonances with a lot of these paintings. It took my geometry, my gridding. Uh, but then what happened, especially in this one, that really fascinated me, is these kind of quasi-figures emerged out of the geometry. And I took that and ran with it. Um, even though they're a product of what I've made, along with what the computer made from what I made, and then I took that another step, so the computer is folded into the process. Uh, and uh, here's a process photo of that painting earlier on where you see it was much more hard edge. Then I went back in and, uh, and white and red came into it much more. It became much more of a, like a red painting. And I'm working in red now for the first time in, I don't know, 15, 20 years. Here you see the source image for that painting. There's a relationship, but it's different. And of course, as always, you discover things, I discover things by making them by hand. Um, and, uh, and the computer is just another tool that's included in the process now. I've always wanted to include it, you know, but it wasn't far enough in what it could offer. You know, it's so much better now. Well, could you, and you don't have to go into length, but just sort of the continuity of integrating architectural tools into your process, going back to the use of the compass in your early work, and right. how it resonates currently? Yeah. Uh, the compass, uh, there's, there's one of the compass paintings right there. You see the block in the center, the bolt that threaded into the block is right here, but it was coming from behind, uh, then that would hold this compass, but then would swing from that center point, which threaded through this bolt. Uh, so I started making those paintings and say, or studies for those paintings, and then over the course of, say, 1988, 89 to 1992, I did many, many different permutations on this um, process and making paintings from the compass. Uh, then I moved on to the grid and, you know, expanded it. It's nice to return to the compass again. I mean, what happened to me with architecture, I think, it's clear to me now, looking back, is that just when I phased out architecture uh, and we were hand-drawing everything, even these very, very complicated elevations and plans of the pyramid at a certain point were all drawn by hand. We had a computer consultant, but it was very early in that stage of using computers and AutoCAD or whatever program was at that time. I never learned AutoCAD. 
there's another program called VectorWorks, which people use, architects use. I never, I just wasn't that comfortable. I love drawing by hand. I love painting. I love doing things by hand. I'm a real hands-on person. Uh, and then when architecture went in that direction, it wasn't the only reason. And um, I feel like that was the right decision to make. I don't want to sit in front of a computer screen. And I also really object or question artists who have other people making their work for them, especially painters. Because to me, that's all what it's about. What's happening in this process is not predetermined. There's a marriage between the conceptual aspect of the work and the making of it, which involves a kind of open-ended discovery, and that each one leads to the next. The one behind you was first, this one was second, this one came along around the same time. There are others in the process, those smaller ones, that threaded through. They overlap, they inform each other. In the studio, as I was saying to you, I move them around. So the, the relationships are always, they're always influencing each other and I perceive them in various ways. This one came along, that one after that, that one, and then there's others. And I'm anxious to start new ones. I'm ready to go move these out of the studio and have a new one, new body of work at this scale, and then eventually at a larger scale when I get a larger space. And I feel held back from that. I feel, in the moment, some frustration um, that there's not, that um, inter the interest in this work hasn't developed to the point that I'm getting an offer of a show yet. That amazes me. You know, I feel really, but then on the other hand, I'm not totally amazed because it seems to take so long for people to catch up to the work. And that's clearly the case with these. A few people come through. I post them on, online. I put them on my website. There's some interest, but you know, ultimately, this kind of painting, it's good to see it in person. You know, it has an effect on you in person. The physical presence of it. Oops! Oh, that's a naughty word, presence. You know? Because people want to think of everything as being about marketing. This is not about marketing. This is about making something that's original as a product of your own unique point of view. And at this point, I've got a unique point of view. Who else do you know who has that kind of the experience that I've had in architecture and in painting? Is there anyone else? I can't think of anybody. <laughs>